I'm a believer. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Let's talk. How do you, um, let's talk about the school system, um, where you stand with it, your experience with it, what has happened with you and your kids. So I guess maybe let's start from the top. Where, how do you feel about the school system at the moment? Mm. Um, okay, well, at the moment, in light of everything that has occurred um, in relation to the flu that's come across the pandemic, <laughs> the pandemic. Um, you know, I think that it, there's been a lot of changes. And in terms of the school assumes that they have a lot more control over our children than they should. Um, so I'm, I'm finding that I, I personally need to be going in a lot more and saying, well, hang on a second, I don't agree with this. Therefore, my children will not be participating uh, because I am the authority not you um did you was has that up the ante since this whole um palava or did you just not notice it before not noticed it okay so it's always been it's been yeah. like that yeah didn't wow. notice it um but this time for example children needing to wear masks in schools absolutely not there was absolutely no scientific data that suggested that it was beneficial Information is now out, especially with the Cochrane Report, yes, saying that yeah. they did absolutely nothing. Um, and the fact that they tried to tell us that it was mandatory, well, that's fine, but that they, they were using words. And mandatory doesn't mean that you had to wear it. It was saying, we are putting it in. You can put it in all you like. doesn't mean that I need to abide by it. Um, and it was very simple for, for parents to say, my child is not wearing a mask at school. That's all that needed to be said. So it wasn't that hard? No, not at all. Just an email. Uh, yeah. So we sent an email. My children never wore masks to school, not once. Um, however, you know, my eldest was uh, approached by staff. Uh, he was isolated. Uh, but, you know, he, he called us straight away. You know, this is what's happening. Um, one teacher, you know, threatened, oh, I'm going to be calling, you know, leadership. And he said, good, do it, uh, because he knew that they'd call us. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, that, and that's really good to know that your child um, trusts that you're going to be there and will support him because we've um, instructed him to behave in a certain way and stand by certain morals and ethics. And, and he did that, and now we've got to have his back and say, okay, this is the information we have, this is the information that we're going to go with, uh, we'll support you in um standing by your values and your ideals and yeah make sure that um you're not isolated or treated differently um and they did try to treat them differently so last year um (laughs) i think it was last year that they're blurring together Um, (laughs) last year my two eldest children came home with an ID card that said I'm exempt from wearing a mask and you know people go okay well there's nothing really wrong with that but my husband and I thought that was deeply offensive like show me your papers kind of offensive like why do my children need to show you that they do not need to wear a mask when it is up on the Department for Education uh, posters that if you are not breathing properly, if you're getting uh, rashes, um, if you're feeling emotional, that you don't actually need to be wearing a mask. Yeah. You know, so yes, it was mandatory, but no, you did not need to wear one if it didn't align with you uh, psychologically or physically. Um, so then my children had to prove to you, like why do my children need to prove to you yeah. that they weren't going to be wearing one? They, yeah, they answer to, <laughs> they answer to us. Uh, we represent them because they're underage, so, yeah. Okay, a lot of questions now from that. <laughs> okay. Two of them that come to my head is that, did you find that other parents were supportive or, like, had the same my children, and that were speaking up? The first year, because at the time one son was in high school, um, he was one of seven out of the, I don't know, 1,200 that was not wearing a mask. Mm. Even though, did you know the other parents that weren't happy with it but just weren't speaking up? Do you, or well, is it... uh, two points. One, um, children hated wearing them. 
it was disgusting breathing in your own fumes all day yeah uh and not to mention being in in an environment where staff were fearful for their own health yeah therefore the um the children's rights were not being protected because all of a sudden the adults were saying, well, I need to be protected, you need to protect me, you need to be worried about me. Mm. Um, and then the children were having to take on that anxiety of, oh, that, you know, everyone might get sick because it's the adults getting yeah. sick and we don't want to get grandma sick. Imagine the trauma. The trauma they're already, from that. They're already anxious before all this. I know, exactly. Going, yeah. going through the changes that they're going yeah. through. Um, as as tweens and teenagers, and then putting this on top of them as well, no. like that that's that's just an awful situation. Um, you know they weren't being respected. Their rights weren't being respected. Um, well, the you know these masks and and separation and um, all these rules were enforced upon them. You know for your benefit um, when there was <laughs> nothing really um, supporting um, that direction yeah. that the school was taking um, and I think teachers also have a duty of care I mean that's what that's one of the principles of their role is they have a duty of care to children with and is speaking to other ex-teachers now mm. <laughs> who have seen through a lot of this was what happening is that they can't they couldn't believe how much teachers go along with it and that's mm. part of the you know the, the research you do is like that's part of the indoctrination they've gone through the school system mm. which has made them everyone do the same thing mm. so when the kids are like that's why your stories I guess it's so important to share this is that kids are already made to conform at such a young age and shut down their intuition mm -hmm. and it filters to the parents who have already been brainwashed <laughs> don't say anything like or to conform brainwashed yeah. has got to trigger people's words yeah, but you yeah. know it's it's interesting then that because I'm sure there's other parents that feel the same way that they just don't Act on it. So when all this started, um, I got together with Luke de Sessa and we created Guardian South Australia, mm -hmm. which is a Facebook group. Um, and you know, we have Instagram and Telegram as well. Um, but we've got 12,000 members and you know, we're not even two years old. And that's only South Australian members. There's so there's people. another 12,000 South Australians, um, you know, plus their partners and um, who who were really against um, their children wearing masks. And we did come together and we, you know, sent out letters, we had meetings with the Department for Education, where we notified the Department for Education that there were discrepancies on websites. You know, one website was saying this, the Department for Health was saying that, you know, uh, and they went, oh, and they adjusted that and then never got back to oh. us. So yes, we'll have answers for you. So by you called them on their, on their crap and then they just went in and had a meeting. And we then were there quiet. for a couple of hours. They said, yes, we'll get back to you uh, next week. And then um, did not respond to any follow-up phone calls or emails, um, which just says to us that we were correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gosh, it's crazy. Uh, when you said as well that before, this was always happening, but the schools thought they had um, priority or uh, ownership over the child, to say, like when you noticed because of this, like the, uh, the messaging that was going out, mm. the forms that were coming mm. out. What are some forms now that you've noticed and you've just noticed like, no, you meant to ask me, not tell me. Like, yeah, but the language has changed. Like uh, towards the end of last year, they had activities week and it was very, very dictatorial. Like you will do this, you will inform us of, it's like, wow, you know, like why is it so aggressive? Yeah. Um, and also um, permission forms. Have changed dramatically with the wording uh, and what's an example of that so uh, at the top it says you cannot amend this form well yes I can I'm not <laughs> I'm not contracting to anything that you're stating um, you know I'm pretty sure isn't that coercion anyway um, and one of the things it says on there is that the school can do whatever they deem necessary so whatever is the new word they can do whatever they deem necessary. I don't think so. Like, what does that mean? Yeah. That is that physically, emotionally, psychologically? Like, what does that mean that you can do whatever you deem necessary in that situation wow. for their physical med uh, and medical um, safety or health? Uh, so I crossed that out. Um, it also says... What happens when you cross these things out? What are they doing? Well, at the top, I always 
always nothing. They don't do anything because they can't. So, for example, the primary school that my son, my youngest goes to, uh, tries to make it all online. So now it's all online and you sign permission slips online. So I've notified the school that I will never do that. And the reason is because I cannot amend it. Um, and I'm not comfortable with what the forms stipulate. Uh, and they're okay with that. So I get it in a hard copy and I cross it all out and signature and sign um, and I'll send it back. But one of the things also is that, you know, when you enroll your child, you always put in uh, safety people, right? So always be the parents, the grandmother, an aunt, whatever. So on the permission form, it now says, if they cannot get in contact with me, they will do whatever they deem necessary. No, oh, <laughs> I'm not comfortable with that. So I crossed that out and I thought, if I'm not contactable, then you will contact their father, his name, his mobile number. Um, and you keep because contacting. you do not have permission to do whatever you deem necessary. Yeah. Because if it, let, let's be realistic, if there is an, uh, a serious medical situation, they're going to do what they need to do to keep your child alive. Yeah. Right? I, I trust that. Yeah. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm not giving you permission to do whatever you think is necessary. What if you go, well, yeah, I'm going to give them a tetanus shot. I have not given you permission for that. Yes. And I don't want my child getting a tetanus shot. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, and yeah, that's a whole other subject in terms of vaccinations. Um, you know, over the years, I've learned a lot. Um, if I knew then what I know now, you know, I would have done things completely different. Yeah. Um, you know, but we're all learning. Yes. So <laughs> massive learning. And and this is what this situation has absolutely done. It's awakened people to what has been occurring. Yeah. Uh, I think it's fast processed a lot of things, um, especially in how schools are now interacting with us and telling us what is happening. Um with no consultation, um, for example, the Department for Education, I think last January or February, changed one of their policies, which now stipulates that if a parent is not supportive, a child can get assistance from the school if they want to change their pronouns or see, a, you know, anything along those lines. and. I was like, what does that mean if a parent is unsupportive? Does that mean if, if a, a parent does not agree with affirmation care? Because there's a lot of information coming out saying that that is not the way to be going yeah, because yeah. it causes so much trauma physically and psychologically. Yeah. Um, so if we're not supporting affirmation care, then, um, yeah, the school can um, intervene on your behalf without your knowledge. Uh, Which goes back to your original point that they take. It's almost like they're taking precedence over the child's yeah. decision making. Yeah. So, so we are no longer parents. the authority. Yeah. And that doesn't sit well with me at all. I'm definitely the authority when it comes to my children because I am the person and and their father um, who has their best interests at heart. Yeah. And it's my morals and my values um, that they will be raised learning not what the school decides is yeah. important and what they determine to be um, truth or fiction. Why do you, why, what's your take on why parents more amping up about this? Like why are they mm. going, you know, let's cater to that. Why, why are parents not doing anything? You know, you know how in South Australia masks were removed, right? And then uh, my announcements came in. And then he said, oh, yes, no, we no longer have masks. However, school children need to wear masks still. Yes, yeah. How horrific. Was there any specific reason? Like, did, were they, you know, making others sick? Like, what was happening there? And and people just went along with that. I, I just can't understand. I don't understand. I, <laughs> like, I don't. Like, what would make you not stand for your child um, and represent your child and say, well, my child is healthy, they are not sick, they're coming home, they're leaving school, masks are off, no one else, you're passing people in supermarkets, going out on weekends, going to party, interacting, but at school, only you in this age group will be wearing it. Yeah. yeah. That I don't understand that. So parents didn't speak up then. Um, and I think it's not that people don't want to, I think it's that they don't know how to. 
Um, like what tools can we actually use in order to address this situation? I have a lot of people saying to me, um, I might get into trouble. I think, but you're an adult. Mm. Who are you going to get in trouble by? Are you doing something illegal? Uh, because all, all we're doing is sticking up for our children and representing them and saying, well, this is how we live. And yeah. therefore, this is how they will continue to live. Uh, I get there are, you know, people say, well, it was, a, it was a uniform, part of the uniform. It wasn't part of the uniform. It was never part of the uniform. Um, yeah. And if there is a part of the uniform that is causing you distress, they will change it. If you're wearing shoes, school shoes, that for some reason you can't wear because you've got a bunion, you're going to be able to wear sneakers like there, there's a trade-off there so why couldn't the same be said for masks um, and because and this is what i asked i mean i was speaking to another teacher and I said look uh, at the beginning of the year i went into the children's schools and said we do not um align with the gender ideology uh we support adults to do whatever it is that they want to do yeah. however when it comes to children you know putting hormones into their young bodies um and cutting off bits and pieces that is not in their best interest um so we don't want our children learning about that stuff mm. um so if there's any discussions any presentations um etc our children will not be part of that they can take time out they can read a book they can do homework has that happened that that's happened, happened, no, happened yet no. no uh it did happen a couple of years ago when in year seven curriculum my, where they were part of the um health was learning about transgender and um, how to go about that, you know, you're planting seeds and what no, like our child okay. doesn't need to learn that. Yeah. Um, because we want our children to be absolutely 100% um, happy with who they are. And if they're not, then we will help them to find that happiness and that joy yes. and find that confidence to be the best versions of themselves. Within um, their family. Well, yeah, but yeah. within themselves. Like, if oh, you're not happy with yourself and you think that you have to identify as someone else, um, there's issues. Mm -hmm. So why don't we address those issues rather than cover them up and um, or throw them out altogether? Go, oh, we'll just we'll just create, you know, mould you into something new, um, which means destroying you physically. Yeah. Um, so you're already emotionally traumatised because you're not happy with your, who you are. And then we're going to physically harm you with hormones and um, surgery, which we are now seeing a wave of detransitioning yes. that thing. Yeah. Um, and then these poor people who are detransitioning are then mocked by their own community, by their own LGBTQI plus community, and say, oh, no, you know, you're in the wrong and um, just getting hounded. I just don't understand. Um, it's where do you fit? Where do you yeah. belong? Because you know? we didn't work out the real underlying issues within ourselves to start off with, then we're just going to escalate. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. going back to what you're saying about the, like, so there must be more parents that are thinking this doesn't feel right, even if they can't articulate it like as well as you can, they don't feel right about what's going on, mm. but they're still not saying anything. What do, What do you feel like? they need to feel more well what do they need to do what's giving you courage to speak up and well i was just so mad i was really really mad mm. that um the school or the government uh thought they they needed to tell me how i need to take care of my own health mm. well you, you sell cigarettes for goodness sake and you reap great rewards from that yeah um in australia um, and they go, oh, yeah, that's because we need to pay for <laughs> the care. Yeah, and it's like, that, that doesn't make sense. Um, and how, you know, if you weren't doing certain things and you were harming grandma, and and that's just emotional manipulation. Mm -hmm. And what I didn't understand at the beginning was that, you know, my mother works at a, a very busy store and... I wasn't allowed to go and visit her at home. Remember at the very yeah. beginning? Yeah. So I wasn't allowed to visit my mum, but then she could go to work and have hundreds of people visit her, like thousands. So I go, well, I can go shopping and go see my mum, but then I can't go home. I, I don't. I just didn't understand this. Yeah. Like, what is going? <laughs> that was like the very beginning of the way. Oh, something's something's not right here. I don't. Common get sense it. just lost all. I don't get it. Um. Yeah. Yeah, so really. 
just getting mad then. Well, like, yeah, so I got really upset um, that someone thought they could tell me how I needed to raise my child. Um, and I think a few years before this occurred, which I was not a part of, um, no jab, no play. Okay. And I now look back at those uh, parents and what they did. I think, wow, the fight that they've had mm. to go through because their children who are not vaccinated can't go to kindy. So their children can't go to kindy with children who are vaccinated. So if you're vaccinated, I'm then safe. you should be safe. And the only children who should be getting sick are the ones who are not vaccinated. They're not bringing it in. And, and, and to mention that I'm pretty sure, is it accurate that when you've been vaccinated, you, you have a part of that virus within your system. Yes. Therefore, other, you kind of need to be careful around other people who are vulnerable because... You've been exposed to yeah, it. Yeah, because you've been exposed to it. Yeah. So you technically would be could be harming the unvaccinated, right? Like, so I don't make sense. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, so people just need to question more. What do you encourage parents to do during all of this? Because it's it, 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 the narratives are changing very quickly, and there's a lot of them at the moment. Like, so what do you encourage parents to do? Um, I think Tucker Carlson said it really well. Like, because he just got taken off Fox, um, and I can't repeat it. But uh, basically we were shocked by how easily people do not want to go against the grain. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that that is uh, worrying. It's worrying because people turn on you. Um, your, your own family and your own friends will turn yeah. on you because you have a different opinion. Um, so, and that's why we created GSA. Because we thought, well, there needs to be more than me and Luke who think this way. And yeah, I mean, very quickly we got all you know thousands of people mm. um, who definitely thought the same way as us, yeah. and and we supported one another, and uh, we wrote letters and we created templates and we shared with one another. And how did you go about doing this? You know, oh well, we walked in with a teacher and uh, walked into the school and talked to the principal or had these discussions or met with these representatives. Um, so yeah, it was just about learning from one another and going, well, how can we best support one another to support our children? At the end of the day, we are our children's best role models. Mm -hmm. um, everything that they do is always going to stem from us. Their belief systems stem from us. And if we do not teach them to represent themselves the best way possible, then we're just going to all go along with whatever it is that they decide is in our best interest and we'll forget that we once had a choice to yes. do what we wanted. Yes, which is why we've got, and I think that's perfectly you saying that because if we don't do that for them now, we get into the position where we're in now where maybe our parents didn't do it for us and so we just go along, the parents of today are going along with it without speaking up because they mm. don't have the tools to. But I don't think you realise that something wasn't 100% either i mean sit very simple example is my family used to eat dinner at five o'clock on the dot every single night mm -hmm. right every night and then i got married and had children and i'm still eating dinner at 5 p.m on the dot and i was getting so stressed because i'm working and I'm, I'm raising children yeah yeah and, you know and wasn't getting and my husband turned around and goes is there a reason that we have to eat dinner at 5 p.m we can change it we're allowed I went, oh my gosh like i didn't know i got a choice <laughs> I have a choice yeah, like, and yeah. that was insanity because it was something that I had been brought up yeah, with yeah. that was the normal why would I question something um, that was just a part of who I was yeah so why was it a rule for my household when I was young I have no idea yeah it's definitely not a rule now as soon as I went huh <laughs> it's out the door <laughs> it's like oh you want me to cook dinner <laughs> if it came from five on the time. I think we're going to just take it easy tonight. Why don't we just buy a chicken, you know? Um, or, yeah, we can eat later yeah. after everyone's come back from sports and yeah. it doesn't need to be before they go and, yeah. Ramming it down so they can fit it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Five o'clock, five o'clock. Just weird. That's a great example. We just don't <laughs> think, do we? We don't think we can change things. We can 
We can absolutely change things. Yeah. And, and yeah, it, it's breaking away and going, oh, why don't we try something new? Try something a bit different. Oh, why don't you try eating at 6 p.m.? See how Revolutionary. Go. <laughs> Revolutionary. <laughs> eating dinner at 6. No wonder um, we've got a problem. <laughs> but it's amazing how ingrained things yeah, become. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you don't even realise it. So imagine, you know, all of a sudden, everyone is told you will do this because it's for your safety. Yeah. And you go, oh, okay. You know, why, why would you question it? Why would you um, not believe that they're doing something in your best interest? Um, I have no idea, but I found that I went against the grain um, and it was the best thing for me to do uh, because the more, well, now it's all been revealed that, oh, yeah, it doesn't stop transmission. Oops. 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 Um, and when I speak to people about this now and I say, well, you know, um, I've spoken to a couple of friends and go, well, you, you, you got it because um, of transmission and you were, you know, caring for elderly people, you had, you had grandparents in nursing homes. Now that you know this, you know, you, how do you feel about it? Um, um, you know, each other, I haven't met someone who's upset yet. Yeah, I know, same. <laughs> I haven't met someone who's upset, but I also understand that you have to, you have you defend your no, actions. Yeah, yeah you made you a, a decision at the time with the information that you had, and that's okay. Um, but I feel now that information has been um, released and that it's informing you that your decision was based on fake information, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe that's an opportunity for you to go, well, how, how do we handle this in the situation? If someone were to come to me and say, I'm now going to give you a vaccination, an mRNA vaccination um, for AIDS, yeah, are you, you going to go, yeah, are you going to take it? Or are you going to go, well, hang on a second, is it still, because this was one of the biggest misconceptions um, that was approved. Mm. Well, no, was it camaraderie? What, what's that word? I don't even know. But it wasn't approved. Yeah. It was on a trial phase. Mm -hmm. Uh, but people say that was rubbish, but it's not rubbish. It's on black. It's in black and white. Yeah, now it's, 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 it's there. It's there. When you go looking um, for it. Yeah, when it, and that's the thing, right? You have to go looking for mm -hmm. it. You have to uh, look for the information uh, and not just believe what it what is what you're being told. Um, Which leads us back to school in a way because the the premise of school um, and a lot of people don't know is that school was created to. Um, yeah, create soldiers and slaves and the modern version of that is employees and consumers mm -hmm. and the, the way the children to work in factories yes yeah and the way that they do that is they get you to memorize the dots not connect them mm. which brings us which connects in what we're saying now is like people aren't haven't been trained or to go and look for the dots to see what mm. connects and what doesn't well they this was broach told. learning wasn't yeah. it broach learning where the teacher stands at the front and, and tells you, tells you, tells you, and you go, yep, 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 and write it all down. There's no time for questioning. So this was this was literally, we were one big classroom. Yes. <laughs> Some of us <laughs> asked questions. Well, and, and we got told off for it. Yeah. Yeah, so it was one big classroom, and, uh, yeah, the teacher was at the front telling us what was going on. Couldn't even see this teacher. This teacher yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Whoever they were. The Wizard of um, Oz behind the curtain. Yeah. And everyone went, okay. Um, I'll just yeah take that information. But it makes sense why we. That's how I could try and not justify, but it make it make sense to me of like how can we be have been so gullible or why are we just doing what we've been told? It's because we've been taught that from our entire mm. lives. Was mm. let's link back into the school system. And if you didn't do it, if you didn't follow what they told you, you'd get this trouble or you'd get a D. Or shamed um, or completely yeah. like your son isolated. You get yeah. shamed, a, a version of shame. Mm. which we don't want to feel as human beings emotionally yeah. we want to feel that we're part of something because we all are a community yeah that, that that's in our very nature you know um yeah you know, our hearts connect that's why hugging is such a um beautiful physical tool because it literally makes you feel better yeah um and yet they told us to not do that they told us to stay away from one another to to stand six feet apart which was just some random number. I know. People just pulled out of a hat and said, yeah, we'll just go with six feet. <laughs> like, like, They're pulling a lot of things out of a hat. Yeah, you yeah. can't sing or dance. <laughs> so, 
stand up. No, no, go. <laughs> I, I seriously can just imagine someone sitting around a table. Put they just go put stuff in the hat and let's pull it out. Yeah, yeah. Let's Can't sit sing here. Happy birthday. Oh my god. Stand yeah. up to go. Stand up. Put your mask on to go to the toilet and then come back and sit yeah. down and take it off. What? We could go on for days. So let's go back to the school stuff. That yeah. is, I believe, um, what my research has led to show you that this is able to happen because of the indoctrination mm -hmm. and brainwashing that happens through schooling. Mm. So how do you, what do you would like to see for your children's future? Like how would you like to see schooling done or? Mm. You know, uh, I'm in a situation when my, my children are older and they've participated. They've done their part. Yeah, they've done they've their bit participated. Like and they're now like the system that they are in. Mm -hmm. So if I had my choice, you know, they wouldn't be in it. Um, and no one would be in it. If I had my choice, we'd all be at home and we'd be um, community educated. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think it's really important that we know how to... I, I can't garden to save my life. I'm learning, but... Yeah. Um, and I'm leaving it with my husband to try and figure it out. And my father's helping. My father has a beautiful garden. Because they learnt those beautiful skills. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and we get our tomatoes and we get fruits yeah. and we get our spinach and persimmons so and, good. you know, all this beautiful stuff that we need... Um, I would love to have some chickens, you know, <laughs> that would be good. How would I go about doing that? Yeah. You know, um, I, I wouldn't know because everything that we get is from the supermarket. Telling my children that what they see on the shelves now is nothing, is just huge compared to what we had yeah. on our shelves. And then you go back to our grandparents mm -hmm. and, yeah. Mm. Uh, it, it's crazy. Yeah. It's interesting. But you'd go back to community for your children? Absolutely. Yeah. Wouldn't it be wonderful to have grandma come in and teach them how to make gnocchi one day? Oh. Or, um, you know, one of the dads get them, teach them how to change a tire, stereotyping, but I definitely don't know how to change a tire. Yeah. Um, or to work on an engine or um, how to climb a tree. I don't care. Someone teaches them how to swim. Um, you know, there's maths in, in everyday learning, like how, mm. how to cook, how to bake. Oh, exactly. Um, the measurements. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so unschooling is a big thing at the moment. Yeah. You know, how awesome is that? I know. Like, <laughs> good. Um, and, and you remember, I remember, I hated going to school. School was boring. The only reason you went was for your friends. Yeah. So you could socialise. And so if no one went to school, you would be socialising exactly. all the time. So good. Um, you know, I have a few um, children who are homeschooled, client children who are homeschooled. And, you know, the more I read up on it, it's like, oh, you, you can do up to three hours a day and you're done. Well, the, um, I've, I've seen as well the one year's curriculum you can do in six weeks. <laughs> yeah. I wish yeah. my kids were yeah. homeschooling. <laughs> yeah, that's, homeschoolers that still, because homeschoolers follow the curriculum where the unschoolers don't, but the yes. homeschoolers that have followed the curriculum, you can get the whole uh, 12 months done in six weeks. Wow, well done. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. Because it's the way that you're doing it in a classroom. You're trying to teach 30 kids yes. one way. So yes. obviously they're not going to all get it. Yeah. And you're doing it in a way that is not interactive or yeah. experiential. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's fascinating. And we love school holidays. You know, we, we, we like count down to school holidays. Um, it's the best part because there's no stress. Yeah. Um, get up when you want. Do yeah. What, do what you want that day. Get up. You're relaxed, you know. Mm -hmm. What should we do today? Let's go for a walk. Let's let's go bowling. I don't know. But the part of the problem is, is that Adelaide is so expensive. You know, there's so many things that we want to do with our children. Yeah. But we can't afford it because they're paying. We're paying so much money, like to go to the beach house and go on a few slides, mm -hmm. or um, you know, just go, go to bowling, to go to the movies, to go out for dinner. Yeah. Right. Everything's really, really expensive. expensive. Uh, so make sure that we do have family dinners with the grandparents. We make sure that we do go on picnics with extended family. Um, make sure that we do catch up. Even though my kids are a lot older than their little cousins, yeah, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Oh, that's that's what they learn from each exactly. other. Both from the older, from the younger, the younger yeah. from the older. Mm. Like even your son just said, he likes hanging out with the younger ones. They're more fun. <laughs> they haven't been 
told what's cool yeah. and what's they just be themselves. Yeah. They'd be stupid. Yeah. And, and and yeah, that's the whole thing. Like when they're coming into that tween age where they start to care about what other people mm. think. You know, I mean this is a stage where we're meant to be laying that foundation of of loving yourself um, for who you are. And if that foundation is not set, then we're going to, you know, be welcoming in issues. Which is which it shows, doesn't it? Because if you're not listening to yourself in your tweens about tapping into your intuition or your inner knowing, then we get to adults and now adults are so disconnected from the intuition or their mm. integrity, which is why they're not potentially speaking up for their kids now. Yeah, well... It has to... Yeah. Because that's learnt. Yeah, it's you all learnt. You get used to not yeah. saying anything. You and get that's used why, to... That's why I love doing what I'm doing because I get to work with 9 to 12-year-olds and teach them you know, about energy and, you know, people go, oh, that's all woo-woo stuff. Well, no, because we participate in energy every day. Yeah. When you say, oh, that person makes me feel a certain way, it's because you're picking up on, on energy. Yeah. Um, or how you know someone's staring at you and you quickly whip around. You know, how did you know that they're staring at you? So I love I love teaching all that stuff uh, to the kids and um, going through that you are in charge of your emotion mm -hmm. and you can decide what... And uh, what you do with it. So if you're having a bad day, how do we flip that around? Um, yeah, I mean that that's power in itself. That is the power, knowing that you are your own authority. And if we can get parents on board as well and love themselves, because it all comes from from them. So I work with children, but it's about sitting down and having a chat with mum and dad when they need it too. Yeah, and going well, what's going on for you? Um, you know, how can I support you and and get you on a path to be the best representative for your child? Yeah. Because you're the, you're the person they love most in this world. You're the person they're going to learn from. So be the best version of yourselves for them. And if we're doing it for kids now as well, that's what my what I'm doing as the healthy whole humans mm. is because you're you're born a healthy whole human. Mm -hmm. My mission is to make sure you stay that way. Yeah. <laughs> so there's nothing doing... wrong with you. No. <laughs> just keep being more of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we can keep nurturing that and um, creating an environment where they can be more of that, we mm. they'll just be healthy mm. old adults. I call it, but, you know, there's so much for us to learn and... Um, Create something better. Yeah, absolutely. And, and this is a beauty of, of what's happened is we've gone through this trauma over the past three years and really question what the hell is going on what have we been shown what have we um been told to do uh and do we actually need to keep doing it because no we don't no <laughs> we need to create something way better yeah yeah and um hopefully through gsa you know that's what we're doing is we're supporting guardians to be the best version of themselves, to know that we've got your back, um, that we're doing it. And it, it's whole, all role modelling, isn't it? Like, um, yeah, if I can do this and you can do it too. And it means you have to say less because you just be, you are, you're leading by example. Mm. You're just being who you want to be, yeah. Well, Speaking. you're representing yourself in the best way possible. Exactly. Um, yeah, and... Um, uh, you know, there was a. I had a lot of fear, um, the past two years having to deal with the schools or and so there was that fear, and I, I was always on the defense, so I was always ready for for the attack, and I had to defend myself. I had yeah. to, you know, um, represent myself in a certain way, and then this year, um, I just went no, no more of that. Because I was always worried that something might happen or yeah. that I have to go in or I have to do this. So I thought I'm just going to like deal with it right now. So that's why I went into both schools um, and sat down with teachers and said, okay, th this is where I sit. These are my beliefs. Yeah. Um, this is where we, we stand. I don't need to give you this information. But I am because I want you to have an understanding that if something were to occur, um, this is... This is where I'm coming from. Uh, this is why I won't sign online forms. This is why um, my children will not be wearing a mask. Uh, and yet it's starting something new and it's creating um, those spaces that we want to be a part of, spaces with love and integrity and community focus. Um, 
yeah, rather than just following a demand that had no basis, no foundation. Yeah, something that's really for the kids versus it's not. <laughs> Absolutely, they're, they're, they are our priority. Yeah, 100%. always, always. Um, you know, my, I'm a social worker by trade, you know, and one of the first things you learn is um, your responsibility to your client, that they will always come first. Mm -hmm. uh, and as long as there is no self-harm, or no harm to others, then everything's okay. And we're in we're in this situation where there has been so much harm, um, self harm, um, as well. And it's like, how did, how do we get to this point where that was just thrown out the window? Yeah. How do we get to this point where our duty of care no longer existed? Mm. And we go, oh, we are we are doing this is our duty of care. We're making sure that everyone is following the protocol A, B, and C. It's like, but there, there was no debate about it. There was no discussion about it. Um, yeah, I just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, you could talk about it. I, you can, you're so passionate about it, which we are, because we're just like, why? <laughs> and, we, and we just, just want to create something better. Yeah. I think. But I love that you've just given us a little insight into the things that you have done. Mm. I guess there's parents out there that feel the same way as you do, but they don't know what to do. They mm. don't know how to show up for their kids. Mm. they're scared of feeling left out or shunned so it's good to hear, know that you've gone and had conversations with your teachers and set the precedent about yeah. what you're about yeah um you're writing back to letters that are telling you what to do with your child and you're no yeah no so that, yeah. that's great insight and hopefully that helps people with yeah the tools that they can start well, to well like you said we've been conditioned to believe um that we have to act a certain way and do things um, by certain rules. Mm -hmm. And then you start asking why. Why do I have to work nine to five? Who said I can only have four weeks holiday per year? <laughs> like, I don't like that. I don't want that. Who came up with that? And, um, you know, so take leave without pay. You know, you do what you want. Take more time off. Yeah. I don't know. But, but we do get to make a small difference. Um, in every action that we take and, and we have the power and the authority to do that because no one has authority over us. I think that's a beautiful way to end. Awesome. Oh, <laughs>